My Govan, and welcome to the Tolkien Lore Channel. I'm the Tolkien Geek, and in this video, I want to talk about seven times that Tolkien was actually a character, although sometimes not under the same his actual name, in works of mostly fiction, but there are exceptions to that, so we'll we'll come to that later. Before I get to the topic, though, I did want to mention that coming up soon is September 22nd, which is Hobbit Day. For those of you who are super nerds and know that sort of thing. And much like we did for the Tolkien Reading Day back in March of 2020, the Tolkien YouTube creators that I'm kind of in cahoots with are doing another collaboration this time around for Hobbit Day, which is going to be a Tuesday. So I will not be releasing on my usual schedule first thing Monday morning. This time it's going to be on Tuesday to coincide with everybody else's releases for their videos on Hobbit Day. So be on the lookout for that next week. Don't be surprised when there's not a Monday video. Now, on to today's topic. So the first category of Tolkien as character that I want to go over is the autobiographical or semi-autobiographical uh, works that Tolkien wrote that are basically about himself. And the first and most obvious of those is Leaf by Niggle. I've done a video on Leaf by Niggle. It was a long time ago. It was one of my very early videos. I can link to that in the description below. Um, and basically the story is Leaf is a, a piece of art being done by Niggle. Niggle is Tolkien. Tolkien famously niggled over myriad aspects of the Middle Earth mythology. I mean, he could never quite get anything the way he wanted it. He was constantly changing it. And similarly, Niggle in the story is constantly niggling with artistic pieces of what he's painting. It starts as a leaf and then it becomes a tree with a whole background and all this other stuff. And you can see in the story that what he's talking about is his own personal mythology. And the story basically ends up being about him running out of time because he has to go on a journey, which journey is death, and then he goes to what is basic, it doesn't say this, but it's purgatory. Uh, Tolkien, of course, was a Catholic, and so he believed in the idea of going to purgatory before you go to heaven. And so he goes to purgatory to kind of learn to do better than to focus all of his energy on his own little pet projects and to be a little more helpful to his fellow man and whatnot. I don't want to go into a huge amount of detail with any of these because there's several of them, but that's kind of what the idea of the story is. And so it's 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 autobiographical. It's pretty clearly autobiographical. The other one that I want to mention is less clearly autobiographical, but I think it's still pretty pretty clear for anybody who knows his life well enough to see that there are at least elements of autobiography, and that is Smith of Wooten Major. And I've done a video on this as well, and I can link to that, so you can check that out for another synopsis. But the basic idea is Smith is a guy who, when he's really young, somehow gets in this cake a magical star that was put in it by the baker. And this star gives him basically a free ticket into the world of fairy, which he visits many, many times over the course of his life. And eventually he has to pass that on, but he has all these interesting adventures. And there's this element of Tolkien is seeing in himself you know, if I'm reading the autobiography correctly here, you know, he's been kind of gifted this insight that maybe a lot of people don't have, and therefore he's, you know, he's been to fairy in, in a metaphorical sense many times, but he knows he's going to have to die eventually, and that's going to be passed on to somebody else. Somebody else will have to take up the, uh, the, the mantle of, you know, being the person who goes to fairy and who that is is not really clear. I mean that that part is definitely not You can't really allegorize it very clearly But certainly at any rate the story itself seems Pretty reasonably certain to be at least somewhat autobiographical Related of course are two other works one of them recent one of them very much not recent one of them by Tolkien Also one of them very much not by Tolkien the one that's not by Tolkien is a biopic. It's the Tolkien biopic that came out very recently, and I've also done a review of that, so I can link to that in the description below, so you can go check that out. It's a biopic. I mean, it's not 100% true to life, but it's pretty darn accurate by and large as far as like some of the key uh, themes, let's say. It's not necessarily 
terribly accurate in detail. There are a lot of detail accuracies that are, you know, really true to Tolkien's life, but it's it's more, in my opinion, a thematically true biopic, and it's well done in that regard. I think it's actually a very artistic way of representing Tolkien's life without being 100% true to life, and in that sense, it's kind of almost Tolkienian, because it's, Tolkien would even say that stories may not be factually true, but they are nevertheless true to something bigger than the facts, and so in that sense, it's almost a Tolkienian biopic of Tolkien. So that's pretty cool. The other one that is by Tolkien, but which is not really autobiographical, except in some very minor details, is the Notion Club Papers. Oh, and I just did a video on that recently, so you can go check that out. There's going to be a lot of videos in this description. Uh, so the Notion Club Papers is his second attempt at a time travel story, and the Notion Club, from which the Notion Club Papers derive, is essentially the Inklings, and he even has a sheet of paper where he lists out the names of the Inklings next to the names in the story, and he ends up being Michael Raymer. Uh, so Raymer is one of the main characters in the story, and then there's several others who match up with Lewis and I think Barfield and a few other of the Inkling, Inklings that, you know, he clearly delineated this is who is who, although he kind of changed his mind on a couple of those. But it's it's a really interesting story because it's, it's really complicated and it deals with his ideas of like time traveling via like getting in touch with the memory of other people or things. So like Raymer discovers kind of this idea that you can latch on to like the memory of an asteroid, say, and see where it's been in space and weird stuff like that. And then in the second part of the story, two of the other characters end up end up being like linked together in this weird memory of past events that happened in England, and this actually matches up with semi-historical or, or maybe actually historical, it's not 100% clear, events in England. Uh, so much of what happens from that time is somewhat legendary, but also we have pretty good reason to believe it's factually based, so it's not exactly clear how much of it is history, but at any rate, he makes it into a link with you know, his own Middle Earth mythology by having two of these characters whose memories have basically been inherited by two of the Notion Club members, uh, they end up sailing west and catching sight, at least, of Elvenholm. So there's connections with his own mythology there, but he's also a character in his own story. Not really autobiographical, other than to the extent that the club is basically the Inklings, but it's still interesting. Another very modern iteration of Tolkien being a character is the TV show DC's Legends of Tomorrow. And I really know nothing about this show, to be honest. It is not, I'm not much of a TV guy. I don't follow a whole lot of TV. But when I heard that this one episode was actually going to have Tolkien in it, I decided, well, that's kind of my thing, so I'm going to watch this episode. And taken out of context, you can't really gather a whole lot, but there's this episode where apparently the good guys are trying to obtain or destroy the Spear of Destiny before the bad guys can get to it, and in order to do that, they come across this clue that J.R.R. Tolkien wrote an unpublished manuscript about, I don't even remember what it was, but I think it had some kind of connection to Arthurian legend, you know, the Grail or Gawain or Gawain, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, I don't remember the details now, but basically they end up going back in time, finding J.R.R. Tolkien on the front lines in World War One and they kind of fake his trench fever to get him out so he can help them find what they're looking for. So they kind of play with Tolkien's actual biography, but take it in a totally different direction. It was kind of neat to see that, but like I say, I knew nothing about the actual story, so most of it was kind of over my head, but there is another depiction of Tolkien for you. Finally, and here's where it gets maybe the loosest, because it's not 100% clear, but C.S. Lewis wrote more than one story which refer to, I think, Tolkien and maybe others. There's, there's a theory that it might actually be Charles Williams. If you look up the information, it seems like maybe it was Tolkien at first and kind of merged a little bit into Charles Williams, another member of the Inklings. But at any rate, the stories I'm referring to are primarily the uh, space trilogy that C.S. Lewis wrote, which is interesting because the second story... 
I'll get back to that. But keep keep in mind that the space trilogy that Tol that Lewis wrote was part of the deal that he had with Tolkien, where one of them would write write a space travel story and the other would write a time travel story. Lewis, of course, wrote and finished his space travel story. Tolkien never finished his. But interestingly, in the Notion Club papers, his second attempt at the time travel story, he goes into some discussion of Lewis's space travel story. But that's setting up for later. But if, anyway, for the space travel story itself, the main character in the first two stories and a significant but not as prominent character in the third story, that hideous strength, is Ransom, Elwyn Ransom. Elwyn, of course, is Elf Friend. That's, that's what that means. It's Alf, It's the more modern variant of Alfwin or Alfwina. I'm still not sure how to pronounce that name. I'm sorry. Um, but at any rate, the details we get about his life from the stories, he was in World War I. He's a philologist. He likes to go on long walks through the country, which was a thing that Tolkien and Lewis both liked to do. This was the sort of thing that makes you think he's really talking about Tolkien there, and it kind of makes sense. Some people say in the third story, that, that hideous strength, he seems in character more like Charles Williams, who is a lot more casually accepting of like supernatural weirdness. And I don't know enough about Charles Williams to comment, but I will just note that given the way that Lewis you know, started out being really good friends with Tolkien, and then when Charles Williams joined the Inklings, he kind of really attached himself to Williams, and Tolkien kind of resented that. It wouldn't be surprising to me to find out that he at least took more of a Charles Williams influence for Ransom's character later on. So anyway, the main character is Ransom for the first two stories, and then Ransom comes up again in the third story, but he's not, you don't see him really for most of the story. He comes up towards the end, or at least halfway through, I think. It's been a while since I read the book, but he does come in and just later. It's not, the, the story's not focused on Ransom. So you get all this stuff about him that tends to make you think it's Tolkien because of the World War One stuff and like his rough age and things like that. It just seems pretty clear, at least in the first story out of the Silent, Silent Planet, he's referring to Tolkien. Whether it's supposed to be Tolkien the whole way through, again, can't really comment on Charles Williams because I don't know that much about him. I did read some of his stories and man, are they weird. Uh, the ones I read anyway. But the other story that he wrote, and this one was never finished, and unfortunately it's not all there, a lot of it is missing, but there's a book published uh, somewhat recently, I think, um, called the Dark, the Dark Tower and Other Stories, and this is a collection of stories that Lewis, I think none of them were ever formally finished and published, but the Dark Tower story, and this is where we come back to that idea of the space travel, time travel thing, this one is kind of Lewis's take on sort of a time travel sort of idea, and it's really reminiscent of the Notion Club papers, and for several reasons. First of all, it's a group of people who know each other. It's not really clear that they're part of a club, per se. You get the idea that they've been gathered for a specific purpose, because one of them's like a skeptic, and one of them is, you know, good at whatever, and like some of them know each other and were involved from the beginning. At any rate, you get the idea that somehow one or two of these guys came up with this idea of creating a chronoscope, as they call it, um, talking about the way that you could look into the past or future, and the theory being that memory is not really so much you remembering your past, but like a direct experience of the past in some sense. And so on that basis and with some other information, they build what they call a chronoscope, which lets them, they think, look into other times. One of the characters in this story is also Ransom. And it's interesting because at least the first couple chapters parallel the Notion Club papers kind of oddly. Like in the Notion Club papers, they start out with a lot of metaphysical discussion. And similarly in this one, they start out with a lot of metaphysical discussion about the nature of time and you know whether you could time travel. And basically one of them says you can't time travel because where do your particles go? Your particles have to exist in the future is, you know, somewhere, but then that means you can't go there because your particles exist in two places at once. So they're like, you can't time travel, but you can see other parts of time. And so they start looking into this chronoscope and it gets really creepy. Uh, <laughs> I might do a video on this at some point. Uh, 
I'm not really sure. I mean, it's it's kind of barely Tolkienian, and so I don't know if I want to do a video on it, but it's really well worth the read. Just bear in mind, it, it does get creepy, and so if you're not into, like, almost, uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, um, Cthulhu, the guy who did Cthulhu. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but I'm sure somebody will. Um, but that kind of story, that really is existential terror almost, if that creeps you out too much, you might want to shy away from this story. But it's really interesting read. I haven't even finished it yet, but it's it's interesting. So anyway, those are the seven times that I'm aware of that Tolkien has been a character in some other work, either by himself or by others. There may be others out there, so if you know of some, please do mention them in the comments, and I may have to go check those out, too. So I hope you enjoy that video. hope it gave you some ideas of other things to read or go check out. Like I said, I'll have a lot of links in the description for videos that I've done on some of these different topics. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it around. You can, of course, follow me on Twitter at JRRTLore for some occasional Tolkien-related trivia questions. And... You can also subscribe to the channel here. Don't forget to click that bell icon. You can support the channel here, and you can find two of my previous videos here. Until the next time, I'm the Tolkien Geek, signing out for the Tolkien Lore Channel. Namariye.